If you can't beat them, join them. If you're scared to fight it out, watch him and watch out. If you think your girl's a good looker, take a good look at this guy's dolls. My name's Bond, James Bond. George, congratulations on celebrating the 50th anniversary of the James Bond franchise. And it's been, what, 44 years since Honor Majesty's Secret Service came out. Mm, I do feel old. <laughs> Before you got involved with 007, what was your take on the franchise? Did you enjoy the movies? Were you a fan of oh, Connery's work? Absolutely. I, uh, in fact, I was more than a fan. I was envious of him. I had uh, a date one time. Going in, I had a 90% chance of uh, getting lucky. <laughs> I think I had about a 21% coming out. I thought, geez, if I ever get the chance to be that guy, I'm going to be him. And uh, then it came along. Were you intent on getting the role? I mean, were you really hungry for this? Or was it kind of like happenstance and man on the street in the right place at the right time? I wasn't intent on getting the role. I never thought I'd get the role. First of all, I'd never met an actor. Mm -hmm. So, and the ones that I'd heard about that were in the clubs that I could get into were all broke. So I didn't really want to be an actor. <laughs> you know, I liked the idea of lots of money and lots of girls and the lifestyle that where James Bond would get me. I lied my way in there, saying I'd done movies in Czechoslovakia and China and Russia and places I didn't think they could check on. <laughs> and uh, but I did uh, get a bit what should I say anxious in there. I thought this is way above my head. I'm getting out of here. Hmm. And they said, be here tomorrow at 4 o'clock and meet the director. And then uh, the director came back at 4 o'clock the next day and I went in there and I let him. I said, Peter, he was angry because he wanted to stay in Switzerland. He was over in Switzerland uh, location hunting. Right. He wanted to stay there for the weekend with his friends. But Cubby, and, uh, Cubby said, we've got this great Cubby guy. Cubby said, get your butt back here. And uh, I said, Peter, i got to level you. I've never been active before in my life. And he just stared at me for a minute, and then he just started blowing off. He said, you say you can't act? He said, you fooled the two most ruthless guys I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and uh, he said, stick to your story, I'll make the next change. The new star, the different Bond. The name's Lazenby. They already tested 300 guys, and they went, no one can match what Connery had. Sure. And it was this... Uh, sort of sure of themselves, arrogant kind of thing that I had. And I was only bluffing because I didn't really know much at all about anything. I was from the bush in Australia. And so they changed my accent, changed my walk. Out of all these amazing locations, what was your favorite setup, your favorite location, your favorite part of filming Majesty's Secret Service? I was more comfortable in London. You know, they spoke my language. I had places I knew to go to. I was stuck up in the mountain so long, six months I was up in that mountain. And I started getting a bit cranky about it, and they gave me a helicopter at night, and a limo to meet me wherever I landed, and I could take the girls with me, so they all wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> and then my manager was telling me that James Bond was over, that, you know, it was make peace, not love, uh, not war. Right. And uh, I was, uh, it was a hippie era, and Easy Rider was the number one movie. So I was listening to him and thinking he was right. It was Sean Connery's gig, get out while you can. Mm -hmm. and so I never signed a contract. And then the millions came out under the table to do another one. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, what's wrong with that? He said, you'll make millions doing anything. You know, don't worry about the money. So I didn't. And I wasn't really concerned about the money. I, sure. I had more money than I'd ever had in my life right. by this stage. And so money's money, you know, it's... Uh, so what kind of formed that decision? bad blood with producers and it wasn't enticing to come back or you felt you had done it once? Was, no, did no, people know no, Connery no, I, was coming I, back? I didn't. Uh, they paid him a fortune to come back to two million pounds in those days uh, because they couldn't find anyone in a hurry. Right. And so uh, it wasn't that at all. It was just that, you know, I'd go in a restaurant in my suit and short hair and people would say, excuse me, waiter. You know, everyone had long hair sure. and beards and uh, flowered shirts and necklaces and bell bottoms. I, I just felt that uh, it was over. Also, you know, I, I wasn't into being an actor. 
mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. I didn't want to be an actor in the first place. Sure. And then I found I could make more money doing that than anything else. Mm -hmm. So I went over and I couldn't work anywhere because as soon as I'd get on a film, they'd tell them that they're under contract to me. And, mm -hmm. and so I couldn't, every film I got on in any country, I got thrown off. Did you ever wish you had another crack at it, another opportunity to do another one? And if so, which of all the titles would you love to be Bond for another one? You know, the answer is going to disappoint everybody, even me. I didn't have any urge to do it. Uh -huh. Even before they got Connery again, they came and saw me and tried to get me to, hmm. to do it. And I had long hair and a beard, and the director was saying, look at him. They were still trying to get me to do it. What do you think of the, the series now and the direction it's going, a little more visceral with Daniel Craig? I've only seen one, and I, you know, he's obviously a good actor. And uh, he plays the role to suit this audience. Yeah, but it's much tougher and harder than than uh, we were in the 60s. Yeah. You know, we, were, we had heart and soul, and even though you were a killer, mm -hmm. you still could uh, you could still shed a tear for sure. someone dying. What is your favorite line from On Your Majesty's Secret Service? My line? <laughs> I used to say during the film, I'd say, uh, I bet you the other fellow never had to do this when I was doing my own stunts and jumping off buildings and stuff. And uh, Peter Hunt said to me, say your line. I said, what's that? This never happened to the other film. And I said it, and uh, they used it. As the man says, this never happened to the other fellow.